Remember when FSR was firstly released in two games, Forspoken and Immortals of Avium, and it was actually a mess where you needed to use V-Sync and so on in order to make it work properly, and then after that it came for Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, and it was actually the first FSR 3 version where, well, it worked handsomely. And then it came to games like Starfield as well, where it worked wonderfully as well, perfectly as it should from the beginning. Yeah. We remember. No way. But at the same time, we also remember that after that, we had some games like, for example, Robocop Rock City and The Last of Us, where FSR 3 frame generation just sucks. And the same applies, for example, for Call of Duty Modern Warzone. Modern Warzone? <laughs> For Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, which includes Warzone 3, where frame generation didn't work properly at first, then it got an update and worked properly, and now it isn't working properly once again. And that made people start questioning themselves if the issue was with AMD and FSR 3 frame generation alone, or if the issue was with the developers that weren't implementing FSR 3 properly. But then I actually went a bit more into it and made a video about how the mods were fixing FSR 3 frame generation implementation in both The Last of Us and Robocop Rock City. So if the mods came from AMD, because AMD made FSR 3 frame generation available for anyone, the SDK at least, if frame generation was working properly there with mods, and it wasn't working properly with the official implementation, it kind of meant that the issue were the developers. And it seems that once again, sadly, we were right. Because in this video, I'm gonna show you once again FSR 3 frame generation done right. But it happens that some days ago, I was just minding my own business online, and I actually went to Steam and saw an update. A Fort Solis update that included oh FSR 3. And when I saw this, I immediately thought to myself, is this a properly done FSR 3 frame generation implementation? And it happens that when developers want to make things right and aren't implementing FSR 3 frame, ge frame generation with their hands uh, in front of their eyes, they can do it right and frame generation will work properly and smoothly. And if you don't know what Fort Solis is or what game it is, well, it is kind of a slow-paced game that features the, or at least includes, the the voice actor of of Arthur in Red Dead Redemption 2, which is the main, uh, the voice actor of this guy that you see right here, the main character, one of the main characters. Uh, and I can tell you that if you like story-driven games, this is the game for you. It is slow-paced, but has a very nice story, very nice ambient and so on. But well, I'll just start showing you the performance. But before, let's just lay an eye on today's sponsor if you want to help the channel. Today's sponsor is Maximum Settings, a cloud-based gaming service where you won't need to spend thousands of dollars to upgrade your PC or a personal nuclear plan to boot up your system. Just do it! For as low as 9.95 Canadian dollars a month, you can play the most recent games on your computer, even if your hardware isn't prepared. And now with increased performance and reduced latency thanks to the bare metal technology. And believe me, I tested it and it runs very well. Sign up today for your full Linux gaming PC with no resource sharing and start enjoying high-level gaming on any PC. Now, once again, Fort Sol is anywhere running at 1440p. By the way, you're seeing the 7900 XT. It can deliver more FPS. But what I'm doing here is I'm running a power saving profile. As you can see, the card is only pulling around 270, 280 watts, depending on the situation. Because once again, I'm running the power saving mode. Let's just open this part. Um, and as you can see, let's let's enter the, yeah, the heavier part. As you can see, I told you that the game has a really, really good ambient. Yeah, the atmosphere, that's what I meant. And as you can see, we're running 50-something FPS. This part is actually quite heavy. 55, 56. Now, as soon as we go to the options, I need to look like this because, yeah, the camera is in front of the option menu. Then we have uh, frame generation and FSR3, frame generation and FSR3. Let's set FSR3 to quality. And immediately, we went from 55 to 92, 93 FPS. This game is made with Unreal Engine 5, so it is quite heavy, especially in these parts with lots of, of info. And as you can see already, even with quality mode, we're upscaling from 960p, which is not much. And FSR 3 does not, does not really deal very well with lower render resolutions. FSR 3.1 will gladly take a hit on that and will make it much better. But at least for now, yeah. 
uh, FSR 3, which is basically FSR 2.2 in terms of upscaling, doesn't deal very well in terms of, um, of lower resolutions. But still, we went from 50 something in that specific part to 80, 81, which is quite good. As soon as we enable the frame generation, let's see, frame generation, bam, we immediately go to 157, 158. Now, I know that some of you guys will say that, yeah, it can't be seen in gameplay or it can't be seen with recording on, but it can be seen with recording on. Listen, this is just so fluid, so smooth. Even outside of my refresh rate, I do have some tearing, but the movement, the camera movement is just very, very smooth. Basically, how it should feel when running at higher refresh rates. This is how it should feel. And in most times, it doesn't feel like this at all because, once again, the frame generation isn't working properly. But in games where it does, like Starfield and so on, yeah, you can see. And if you watch my previous video where I actually fix The Last of Us and Robocop frame generation implementation, you can see that even on video, you can definitely see the difference in between the, the frame generation that isn't working and the frame generation that is working. You can see it on video. Damn, this is how all frame generations should be implemented. So once again, thanks to Fort Solis developers for actually implementing things properly and making frame generation 3 work decently on their game. I mean, it's just how it is supposed to work. Smoothly, no issues, just a bit of tearing because I'm outside of my monitor's refresh rate, not in this case, in here I have no tearing whatsoever at 120 and it just feels much better than having, let's say 60 FPS or even 80 FPS with the upscaler. Frame generation just makes the game f feel like, well, much smoother as it should. Once again, once it is working properly, and Fort Solis is one of those exact implementations where FSR 3 is working. And it just came some days ago, so if you are still thinking about it, if it is AMD or developer's fault, yeah, we know that it is developer's fault, as Fort Solis implemented it some days ago and is working as it should. Man, imagine if we, if we could actually have this in almost all games, and since it is free, almost all cards could use it, but working properly. Because the implementations in Robocop and The Last of Us were just unusable. It was much better to use, let's say, 80 FPS with FSR 3, only FSR 3, uh, than using, let's say, 150 with frame generation, because the frame pacing was completely messed up and the frame generation wasn't working as it should, so it was kind of, yeah messed up, definitely. So overall, yeah, I just made this really, really short video of FSR 3 frame generation done right. So once again, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it is AMD's fault. It seems to really, really be the developer's fault that they just, I, I don't know, I don't really know what, what we're talking about because it seems like they just implement things without even testing them. And testing things that you implement should be a, a must in any case scenario but it seems that it isn't actually. Now one thing, if you want to use ultra-wide resolutions like 3440 per 1440, so 1440p ultra-wide instead of 1440p, the normal 1440p, what will happen is that frame generation is kind of bugged because this game isn't ready to use ultra-wide resolutions and what happens is this, look at the character's head. Yeah, we have lots of artifacts, yeah, because it's like the game isn't ready, the frame generation isn't ready for ultra-wide, so as soon as we activate ultra-wide, the frame generation doesn't work properly. But apart from this, if you're running the normal resolutions like I was, 1440p, or let's say 4K, 1080p, the frame generation will work as intended. But apart from that, it is what it is. But still having frame generation finally working properly on a, on a current title, like Fort Solis, yeah. Yeah, made me feel nice, and since it works so well, it's definitely an addition for such a heavy game as Fort Solis. And since we, it is a really slow-paced game, frame generation is, yeah, it just works wonderfully. Much better than playing at 80 or even 90 FPS without frame generation. Definitely a plus, and very, very welcomed. And I'm almost finishing my first CPU comparison in months with the 5700X 3D versus 5800X 3D versus 7800X 3D. I'm currently editing the video uh, and I still need to record some things here and there. But overall, 
yeah, I'm just really excited to bring you finally some com CPU comparisons once again after almost a year. Uh, after like 250 videos, I believe, I bring you a new CPU comparison and this time with more data. Instead of just gaming data, I also bring you professional workload data like Blender, uh, Photoshop, Premiere and so on. But well, we'll get there. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and see you in the next video. And if you didn't play Fort Solis and you like story-driven games, do, because it is great. And now with frame generation, even better. Cheers.